So guys, my name is Craig and I'm a magician and I do magic. Now, uh, before I start, I want to know that all of you guys that are watching me like, like magic as well. So if you like magic, put your hand in the air, wave it around so I can see it and say me. Brilliant. I heard that. That's amazing. So this isn't going to be like a normal magic show. Because what's going to happen here is I'm going to teach you guys how to do lots and lots of magic. So by the time that I finish this session at 11 o'clock, not only will you have seen some really cool magic, but you're going to learn how it works as well. Now, all the magic tricks that I teach you are you going to use everyday objects that you find around the home. We're going to do some magic with pieces of string, with envelopes, with... Uh, pieces of paper with elastic bands or uh, uh, paper cups, all the stuff that you'd find at home around your house. And I'm going to be teaching you how to do the tricks. Now, don't worry too much about trying to do it in front of me as I'm teaching you, because when this session's finished, you're going to get a recording of this and you can watch it over and over again. So if there's a trick that you particularly like and you go, I really want to learn how that trick works, then you can watch the recording and you can figure out how it works. But before we do, any of that, I thought it'd be really cool to show you some magic first of all. Would you guys like to see some magic? Give me a thumbs up if you want to see some magic. You do, brilliant. Okay, so this isn't going to be a normal magic trick. So I'm going to be doing what we call close up magic. So, this is the sort of thing that you see Dynamo do. If you've seen Dynamo on the TV, this is the sort of magic that you see Dynamo do. And I want you to watch very carefully. I'm going to tell you what this first trick's all about. I'm going to try and make a coin appear at the tips of my fingers. Right in front of your eyes, I'm going to make a coin appear at the tips of my fingers. Not just any coin, I'm going to make a silver American dollar appear, which is the largest coin you can see. So I'm going to take a piece of nothing, I'm going to hold that piece of nothing right there. Now you can't see the nothing, because there's nothing to see. But if I take that nothing and blow, watch, I can turn it into a coin. Now that's a silver American dollar. But now I've got the coin, I can do the trick. Watch the coin, if I take that coin and squeeze it, it looks like it disappears, but it actually goes down here by the elbow. If I take that coin and put it in this elbow, it comes out this elbow, if I take it and hang it over there, it jumps over there, this is magic. Now I'm gonna show you that again. You see, that's one coin, but if I reach into the air and take another piece of nothing, Give it a shake, I can get a second coin, that's coin number two. Can you guys see the two coins? Give me a thumbs up if you can. So now this is what I'm going to do. I want you to watch really carefully. Watch this coin over here. Watch this coin over here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make the two coins. I'm going to make one of these coins jump into the other hand. So I'm going to put the two coins here. You can see them here. I'm going to make a fist here. I'm going to close this hand and one of these coins is going to jump into the other hand. It happens on three. One, two, three. And that's when the coin jumps into the other hand. Now, I'm going to tell you how that works. It's very simple. You start with two coins over here. There's nothing in the other hand. And what you do is you make a fist. And then when you're not looking, you take one of the coins out and you put them in the other hand. That's coin number one. That slow motion, full speed, looks like this. You just shake. And that's when the second coin goes across. You don't really see it. So I'll do it one more time, but at the tips of the fingers. Watch this coin over here. Watch this coin over here. Do not blink for a second. I'll hold the coins at the tips of my fingers. I'll go up and down like this, slowly, getting faster, getting faster, getting faster, getting faster. If I go fast enough, I can actually have that coin jump at the tips of the fingers. If you're liking this, put your hand in the air and say, me, good stuff. Now look, I'm going to make a fist around this coin here, and your job is to watch this hand and make sure it stays in a fist. This coin right here, I'm going to hold at the tips of my fingers, and I'm still going to make the coin in my fist jump over to join the coin at the tips of my fingers. One, two, three, it happens again. Now I know how that works, I'm a magician, it's my job to know how it works. What I don't understand is how I've got a third coin over there. That one there is coin number three. But now I've got three coins, now I can do the trick that I wanted to do. Watch the three coins. I'm gonna put them right here in my hand. And one at a time, I'm gonna make a fist around them. And one at a time, I'm gonna make them go up the sleeve, across the chest, down the other sleeve, and into the hand. If I do this, that's the first coin across, that's coin number one. If I shake, that's the second coin across, that's coin number two. And the third coin looks something like that, that is coin number three. And for the big finish, I'm gonna make the coins disappear. Watch the first coin. If I take the first coin and squeeze, that one disappears and you will never see it again. 
If I take the second coin and squeeze, that one disappears and you will never see it again. This last one, it's really difficult to make disappear because I can squeeze and make it disappear, but it always comes back. If I put it in my pocket down here, it still comes back. And the problem that I can't make this disappear, the reason is, it's too big. You see, if you look at it, you can see it's actually 20 times bigger than all of the others. And that's the big finish. Did you guys like that? Put your thumbs up if you did. Amazing. Now, that is a coin trick. And I'm going to be teaching you some coin tricks a little bit later on. But I promise I'll do some magic for you. So I'm going to do another trick right now. I'm going to show you my favorite trick. If you want to see my favorite trick, put your hand in the air and say, me, amazing. This is my favorite trick. Now, this is a trick with a cup and uh, a, a, a dice or a die, if you want to be grammatically correct. We don't need the bag. We'll put the bag here. I will tell you, though, everything magical that happens takes place on this bag. So if I put the bag here on the table, can you see the bag? Give me a thumbs up if you can see the bag. Give me a thought. Oh, brilliant. Okay. So keep an eye on the back. Everything magical takes place on the back. Now, inside this cup, there is a dice or a die, if you want to be grammatically correct. The die goes into the cup. The die comes out of the cup, as you would expect. I'll show you the inside of the cup so you can see the inside of the cup. I'll show you the die. Now, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. I want you to watch very carefully. The idea is I have to try and get the die underneath the cup. Okay, so let me explain. I have to try and get that die underneath that cup like that without you catching me. You've got to try and catch me. It's as simple as that. You've got to catch me, get the die underneath the cup. So watch the die, watch the cup. Now I'll show you, there's nothing underneath the cup right now. That's why I wanted you to see the bag on the table. Nothing underneath the cup. I want you to watch the die. Nothing happens until I say go. But when I say go, that die vanishes completely, travels invisibly, and goes right there underneath the cup. Now you might have missed it, so I'll tell you what, I'll do it again. Look, there's the die. There's the cup. I'm going to put the die over here. I'm going to put the cup over here. If I squeeze, the die disappears. It goes underneath the cup again. I will do it one more time. Watch the cup. Watch the die. Now I want you to see there's nothing underneath the cup. The die goes into my pocket. I'm going to go really, really slowly, watch the die in my pocket, and watch the cup. The cup is empty. Check it out. Nothing underneath the cup. And the die is going to go one more time, right in front of your eyes, underneath the cup. It doesn't happen till I say go. Watch here. One, two, three, go. And that's when it goes under again. It's so weird. But I'll tell you what, every trick needs a big finish. Watch the die. I'm going to go for the big finish. The big finish looks like this. I have to tap a little bit harder, a little bit harder, a little bit harder. That's too hard. The problem is when I tap that hard, I actually get a die that's 20 times bigger, which is absolutely ridiculous. Of course, if you miss the big red die, there's a very good chance that you missed the pool ball right there. That is the big finish. Give yourselves a big round of applause. You guys are amazing. You guys are an amazing audience. So, did you enjoy that one as well? I need to know. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs up. Awesome. I'm seeing thumbs up. I'm very, very excited. So, I'm going to do a couple more tricks and then we're going to start the workshop. I'm going to do a couple more tricks. Then I will start the workshop. I'll tell you what I'll do. I will show you this. Every magician has a signature trick. Every magician has a trick that they do that no other magicians do. And this is my signature trick inside this little red bag. Now, inside this little red bag, I actually have two Rubik's Cubes. Put your hand in the air if you've heard of a Rubik's Cube. You guys know what a Rubik's Cube is. Put your hand in the air if you've got a Rubik's Cube at home somewhere. I bet a lot of you have got a Rubik's Cube. Well, I've been solving Rubik's Cubes since I was six years old, and I'm now 43. That's a long time, and I've been solving cubes for a very long time. And inside this bag, I have two Rubik's Cubes. I have the oldest cube I ever, uh, I, ever I, I own, and the newest cube I own. Now, the first cube, this is the oldest one. This cube is kind of, it's probably about 22 years old. It's not being solved in a long time. So this is, this is Rubik's Cube number one. As you can see, it's really, let me come closer to the camera. This cube is really, really, really well mixed up, as you can see. Now, um, the other cube, uh, the other cube is brand new. And I don't know if you guys know how to solve Rubik's Cube or not, but every single person here could solve the other cube. And the reason is, it, it's brand new. It's not yet been mixed. So this is 
this is this is a brand new cube, which is what a cube should look like uh, when you've solved it. It should look like this on all the sides. So I'm going to show you something absolutely amazing. We're going to take the new cube out. I'm going to leave the old cube inside the bag. The other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put this bag right here, and your job is to keep an eye on that bag. Make sure I don't cheat. Make sure I don't do anything. Keep an eye on the mixed up cube inside this bag. Because I'm going to take the new cube and I'm going to come really close to the camera because I want you guys to see this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up this Rubik's Cube. Now, there's 47 quintillion million combinations with Rubik's Cube. It means that the more you mix it up, the, the harder it is to solve. But I'm going to try and solve this Rubik's Cube in um, in one second the world champion does it in 10 seconds with two hands i'm going to solve it in one second with one hand you can see the cube there but let me ask you a question if i could solve it in one second with one hand would that be good put your hand in the air if you think that'd be good that'd be pretty good wouldn't it yeah I, one second with one hand i'm going to come really close to the camera and it's going to happen on three i want to watch the cube on three i'm going to solve it completely one two three and that's when the cube solves completely now magicians are basically repeat a trick but i'm going to do it again because here's the thing let me mix it up one more time because this is what people think i do they think that i'm really quick at mixing up a rubik's cube and so i can unmix it really quickly and that's not how it works any cube can be solved with one move that is a move any cube can be solved with one move look one move to solve the cube i'm going to do one move i'm going to solve this rubik's cube this move right here watch one move i'm going to do it one last time but remember keep an eye on that red bag i'm going to do this one last time now there's quite a few people watching, so I'm talking to you right there with the headphones on. The girl with the headphones on. Yes, you, holding the headphones. You right there now. Yes. Here's what I'm going to do. I want you to pick a colour. So I can't hear you, so I'm going to point to the colours one at a time. And when you're, I'm pointing to the colour that you want, put your thumb up, okay? So we've got white. We've got blue. We've got yellow. Oh, yellow. You want yellow? Yellow. Brilliant. Okay. So I want to watch. I'm going to come close to the camera for this one more time. This is the big finish. I'm going to mix this up one more time, just like this. Here we go. Give it a mix up. 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 Now I want you to understand that to solve a Rubik's Cube, the center points don't move. So if I was going to solve the green side, it would have to be there where the green center is. Do you understand? That couldn't be the green side. That would have to be the white side. Now you said the yellow side, didn't you? Which is there. So I want to watch that cube where the yellow center is. I'm going to solve it in one hand. Slow motion. Watch that yellow side. If I shake, the yellow side starts to solve. And as the yellow side starts to solve, just like you want it, every other side of the cube solves as well. If that was awesome, put your thumbs in the air. Let me know that you like that. That is so cool. But do you remember this bag? Do you remember this bag? And I said, keep an eye on this bag the whole time. And you have kept an eye on it the whole time. And remember, we left that mixed up cube inside that bag. The mixed up cube has been there from the very beginning. I need a big finish. And I can't solve the cube for the big finish because we've already solved the cube like a bunch of times. I have to go further than that. So for the big finish, I'm going to take the mixed up cube inside this bag. And I'm going to try, right in front of your eyes, I'm going to try to make every single color on that cube vanish. The red, the green the blue, the yellow, the orange, the white, even the black under the stickers, every single color is gonna disappear. It happens when I snap my fingers. You're not gonna believe your eyes because now inside this bag, that cube has turned completely and totally see-through on all six sides. And that is a big finish. If you like it, put your hand in the air. Say me! Amazing, that is really, really good. Well, we're gonna do one last trick. And then after this last trick, I'm gonna try and teach you some magic. So I'm gonna do one last trick. And again, because this is close-up magic, I'm gonna try and come really close up to the camera so you guys can see what I'm doing. I have a fork here. Can you guys see the fork? Can you see the fork right there? This is, a, this is awesome, good stuff. So this is a fork. Now, what I'm going to try and do 
here. And I'm going to do this really close to the camera. I'm going to try and bend this fork with the power of my mind. Now, you might have heard of somebody called Yuri Geller. If you haven't, he's from Israel, and he can bend things with the power of his mind. Now, I'm going to try and do the same thing. I'm going to try and bend this fork with the power of my mind. And I'm going to come back a little bit so you can all see. I want you to watch. I'm going to take the fork. I'm going to go up and down. And as I go up and down, the fork, hopefully, will bend. Watch this. I just go up and down. And I just say the word bend. Bend. And as I come closer to the camera, you'll see that the prong on the fork has actually bent up like that, which is so weird. But it gets weird to watch if I do this. And I go back and forth like this, rotating in a semicircle, in a sort of a circle, in a clockwise motion like this. As I do this, you'll see that fork bend right there in the middle, which is so weird. It's so weird. Can you see the bend right there in the fork? So weird. But look, I'm going to straighten it out. I'm going to try and do something really impossible. I'm going to come really close to the camera. And what I'm going to try and do, watch this. I'm going to hold the top of the fork. And I'm just going to twist it round like this. And when I do that, you're not going to believe this, but the fork itself right here actually twists like a corkscrew in a roller coaster. Look at that. It's actually twisted like a corkscrew in a roller coaster. We're going to go one step further, though. I want you to watch this fork. Look, if I go up and down again, I'm going to count backwards from three. Look, three, two, one. And you can see every single prong of the fork has bent. It's bent, it's twisted. And if I do this, you can see that the entire fork is bent in nine separate places, which is so weird. In fact, I don't even get that. I'm gonna put that over there. That is so weird. But, okay, so I've just shown you what you just saw there was close-up magic. Now, I'm probably gonna do some more close-up magic a little bit later on. But that's close-up magic. That's magic that's done close-up. It's the sort of thing that you see the TV magicians do. It's the sort of thing you see Dynamo do. Now, I'm actually a five-time British Magical Society close-up magician of the year. So I know a bit or two, a thing or two about close-up magic. But what, this isn't about me. This is about you guys. Because although I might do some more magic a little bit later on, what I want to do right now is teach you guys how to do magic. Put your hand in the air if you'd like to learn how to do some magic. Cool stuff. Now I'm going to teach you tricks that use everyday objects because I don't want you having to go and buy special tricks. I don't want to have you do that. So everything that I teach you is going to use things that you can find around the house. We're going to use some string. We're going to use some elastic bands. We're going to use some pieces of paper. We're going to use some paper cups. We're going to use some, uh, but the only thing we're going to use are playing cards. Now I'm sure that every single person here has got a deck of cards somewhere around the house. So I'm going to show you how to do these tricks, and here's how it's going to work. I'm going to start off by performing the trick for you. Then once I've performed the trick, I'm going to explain how it works. Now, if you want to, as I'm explaining it, if you want to follow along with me and learn how to do it, that's awesome. But if you don't want to, or if you haven't got the stuff in front of you, that's not a problem, because what we can do is we can send you this recording, and you can watch it a little bit later on. And the, the tricks that you want to learn, yeah, they'll be there for you. Okay, so I'm going to start teaching you magic. Now, there are two rules. If I'm going to teach you how to be a magician, there are two rules that you have to promise me that you will follow. Before I start teaching these tricks, I have to tell you about these two rules. And the first rule is never tell anyone how the trick works. And let me explain why. I can't force you to not tell anyone, but here's the thing. When I show you these tricks, you're going to show your friends, you're going to show your family, you're going to show your, your whoever, you're going to show your brother, your sister, your mom, your dad, your grandma, I don't know, you're going to show somebody, and they are going to be amazed. They won't know how it works. They will think it's brilliant, and they will say to you, tell me how it works. And if you tell them how it works, it no longer becomes impressive, and they're not going to be impressed anymore. But if you don't tell them how it works, they're going to be amazed and they'll want to see it again and again. So the important thing is don't tell anyone how it works. Now, the other thing, the other thing that I want you to promise is that you have to practice these tricks. The more you practice, the better you get at them. I can teach you the trick and you can learn it and do it almost straight away. But if you practice it, you'll get better at it. So if you agree to those two rules that you've got to practice and that you can't tell anyone how the trick's done, Put your hand in the air, and if I see everyone put their hand in the air, I'll start teaching you. Good stuff. Brilliant stuff. Okay, so I'm going to start off by teaching you one of my favorite tricks. I love teaching this trick 
because it's so easy, but it looks so good. And I'm going to come really close to the camera so you guys can see again. These, this, what I have here are two pieces of string. Now, do you see the two pieces of string? If you do, put your hand in the air. You see the two pieces of string? Good stuff. Okay, so this is called the two string trick. And I want to watch these two pieces of string very, very carefully. And don't blink, because if you blink, you will miss it. And this is the most amazing thing you'll ever see. I'm going to take these two pieces of string and right in front of your eyes, I'm going to try and make them go together into one piece of string. And how this came about is when I was a kid, when I was like seven years old, I always wanted to be a magician. But my mom and dad wouldn't let me. And I, the trick I wanted to do was I wanted to saw a woman in half. You've seen the trick where they get a lady to put them in the box and saw them in half. And I tried to convince my mom and dad to let me saw my little sister in half. And they said no. So this is the next best thing. I learned to do this when I was a kid and I've been doing it ever since. Uh, I want to imagine that this is a girl that's been cut in half. You know, you've got, you've got the top part and you've got the bottom half. I'm gonna try and put it back together. I'm gonna to put these two strings back together and I want you to watch, it happens on three. So watch this string, this is piece of string number one. Watch this string, this is piece of string number two. It happens on three. One, two, three. And the two pieces of string go back together into one piece. If you'd like to learn how that works, put your hand in the air. If you'd like to learn how that works, put your hand in the air and wave it around so I know you want to learn how it works. Okay, you do. Good. So let me explain how it works. And I'm going to come really close to the camera again so you guys can see. Now, to do this trick, you need a piece of string. Any string will work. Get yourself a ball of string and cut a piece off. Okay? I'm sure you've all got some string in your house. Now, once you've cut your piece of string off, what you have to do is we're gonna try and take, because a lot of people say, oh, is there an extra piece of string? No, there's not an extra piece of string. What we're gonna do is, there is only one piece of string used in this trick, but we have to make it look like this one piece of string is actually two pieces of string. Oh, you've got string, I see people have string, that's awesome. So we have to make this piece of string look like it's two pieces of string. So let me explain how you do that. First of all, you have to find the middle. Now to find the middle, you take the two ends, and you put them together. When you put the two ends together, the other end, that's the middle, okay? And you grab the middle, drop the ends and hold on to the middle. Now I'm gonna come really close to the camera to show you what I'm doing. I'm coming like ridiculous, let me just get into view. Because in order to do this trick, what you have to do is you have to take the middle and you have to separate the string. You see, the string is made, a piece of string is made up of little fibers. And what you need to do is you need to separate the fibers. Now I want you to see what I'm doing here. If I come really close, you can see I'm pulling gently and I can just separate the fibers like that. You can actually separate the fibers. And once you've separated them like that, what happens is you end up with this separated right there. Now that might take you a few seconds, but you end up with what looks like a T because you've separated the fibers in the middle. Then what you do is you take these fibers and you just give them a twist like this, you give them a twist on this side, and you give them a twist on this side. And so what you have here, and I'll step back so you can see, what you have is one piece of string, but down here in the middle, you've made, it, you've made like a little, uh, a little X. Now, if you hold that X between your thumb and your finger, it looks like two pieces of string. Like you would really be convinced that there's two pieces of string there, but there's actually only one piece of string. All we've done is we've teased the fibers out the middle and made it look like two pieces of string. Now, if you can't do this straight away, it's not a problem. This is the bit where I was talking about that you need practice. But if you just spend five minutes with a piece of string and tease that middle out, you'll end up with something that looks a bit like this. Now, in magic, we call this the prep. And what I mean by the prep is this is what you do before you perform to the audience. So you don't do this in front of the audience because they'll see what you're doing. Before you do the trick, like let's say you're gonna show your mop, for example. You'd go into another room, you'd get your piece of string, you'd, you'd set it up like this, and then you'd walk out with the string like this, and you go, hey mom, I wanna show you a trick. And then you tell them that, they've got two, that you've got two pieces of string and that you're gonna try and put the two pieces of string together into one. Now it's really, really easy. It's, remember, it's important to hold the string here because if you don't hold it here, they'll see that you've, you've got this special bit here. So you hold it here and then all you're gonna do is you're gonna grab hold with the other hand, 
you're going to grab hold of the other end. Okay, so you're going to grab hold of the other end. And then all you're going to do is you're just going to pull this hand in this direction, this hand in this direction. I'll do it slowly first of all so you can see what happens. Look, so I'm going to let go and I'm going to pull. And as I pull, look at what happens. Those fibers go back together into the string, giving us one long piece again. Now that was doing it slowly. I'm going to do it fast so you can see. So once again, I've got to prep it. So let me show you the prep one more time. You take the ends and then you grab the middle. Once you've got the middle, you take the end, you take the middle, and you tease it apart like this. And then you twizzle. And when you've twizzled there, you take the other one and you twizzle there. And once you've done your twizzling, you end up with two pieces of string. And once you've got your two pieces of string like that, you hold it there. So I'm gonna do it in full speed now. So I want you to watch. Here we go, watch, full speed. Watch the two pieces of string. I've got two pieces of string. I'm gonna try and go them together into one piece of string. It looks like this, one, two, three. And you get one piece of string. And it's that simple. And the nice thing is, once you've done it, the person that you're performing it for can examine it and they can touch it, they can feel it. And if, because there's nothing special about it, there's nothing special. You can do it anytime, anywhere. You just need to prep it beforehand. Now, the other important thing that I want to tell you about this trick, not just this trick, but every trick, is it's really, really important to think about what you're saying when you do it. Because as a magician, you're a performer. And what I mean by being a performer is, it's like, it's like being on stage. You know, you don't just want to stand there doing the trick and not saying anything. It's just as important with what you say as what you do. So what I want you guys to do, and you don't have to do this now, but when this session's finished, what I want you guys to do is think about how you can present this. Now, you heard me talk about how when I was a kid, I wanted to saw my sister in half. That's the story that I use because that's personal to me. That's true. I wanted to saw my sister in half when I was a kid. But I taught this to lots of children, and I always ask them to come up with a presentation that's unique to them. And the best way to do that is think about what you're into. Think about what you enjoy doing and try to make the presentation about that. So, for example, I did this about a month ago to a little girl uh, in a school, and she said that she loved ice skating. And she, her story, she said, I was out ice skating the other day, and, and as I was ice skating, I, um, I, uh, I, I, my laces snapped on my ice skates, and I couldn't ice skate anymore. But luckily, I knew magic. I could take the ice skates' laces, and I could pull, and I could fix them, and I could carry on ice skating. And that worked for her because she was into ice skating. I did this uh, about six months ago, and there was a boy that said, oh, I'm really into PlayStation. So he did this whole story about, oh, I was playing PlayStation the other day, and my mum and dad said that I couldn't play it anymore, and they cut the power cable in half. And I was gutted, but my mum and dad didn't realise that I could do magic, so I took the power cable, I put it back together by magic, and I carried on playing the PlayStation my mum and dad didn't know. And that was great, because that was, that was unique to him. I've done it to other kids, and I did, it to, uh, I did a workshop for a whole bunch of children a little while ago, and there was one little boy who was really into football. And he, he did this whole story about how he, he was playing football and he hit the ball so hard that it smashed through the net. And it, it cut the net into pieces because he hit it so hard and he was in trouble with his teacher. But it wasn't a problem because he was a magician, so he was able to put it back together. And, and you know, anything like that will work. So what I want you guys to do when this session is finished is take this trick. Now, practice it, remember. It's important to practice it. You're, you're going to want to show it to people before you practice, but you don't want to do that. You want to practice first, then think of a presentation that's unique to you. Think of what you're into and try to come up with a presentation that fits what you're into. Okay. Did you like that trick? Put your hand in the air if you like that trick. I want to know, I want to know, I want to know. Good stuff, good stuff. We're going to go straight into another trick right now. This is another trick that I really enjoy performing. I'm going to teach you how to do this, okay? I'm going to teach you how to do this. I want you to watch very carefully. Uh, it's called the three card trick. And the reason it's called the three card trick is because I have three cards. Now I'm going to come close again so you guys can see. Can you see the three cards there? Give me a thumbs up if you can see the three cards. Very good. So th th there's a red card, there's a blue card in the middle, and then there's another red card. And I'm going to turn these around so you can see which one's which. I want you to have a look. You've got, uh, you've got a jack 
Can you see the jack right there? I've got a jack of spades in between two red sevens. So I've got three cards. I've got the jack of spades in between two red sevens. Now this is one of my favorite card tricks. I want you to watch the jack. Watch the jack in the middle. Now the jack is the only one that's the odd one out for two reasons. The first reason is it's the only one with a different colored back. So it's the only one with a blue back. It's also the only one that's not a red seven. Now I want you to watch that jack. Don't take your eyes off the jack. Watch the jack. Do not take your eyes off the jack. Don't take your eyes off the jack. I'm going to take the jack here, keep it in full view. Don't worry about the, uh, the sevens. They're not important. So I'm going to put those here. Watch the jack. I'm going to try to do something amazing with this jack. I'm going to make this jack disappear. I'm going to do that. And this jack will disappear right in front of your eyes. Watch one two, three, and the jack has disappeared. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, it's not. You can still see the card. But I didn't say I'd make the card disappear. I said I'd make the jack disappear. And I have. You see, I've actually turned that jack into a joker. The card has completely and totally changed. How cool is that? So would you guys like to know how to do that? Put your hand in the air if you would. Good stuff. Okay, so... The trick to this, and there is a trick to this. Let me explain what the trick is. Um, the trick to this is there's not three cards. You need to get yourself a pack of cards, and, then, uh, and, and I'll tell you how to make a special card. So what you need for this is you need two red cards and a, and a, and a, a, card, a blue card. Now, if you haven't got a blue deck and a red deck, it's not really that important. You could use three red cards. It's just nice if this card is blue because it stands out really that important. So what you need, and let me show you this because you're about to see the gimmick. So you need this one here. So you need a, a blue card and I'm using a joker, which means it's going to change into a joker. You need a red seven and you need this special card. And let me show you why this card is special. On this side, it looks normal, but on this side, it's actually got a seven and it's got a piece of jack stuck to it. And we call this a flat Card. Now I'm going to teach you how to make this. It's really, really easy. What you need to do is get yourself a pack of playing cards, okay? And I'm going to come really close to the camera. And what you want to do when you've got your playing card, you want to take a black uh, court card out. So either a, a king, a queen, or a jack. And let me show you how you're going to cut this. You're going to take that card and you're going to cut it with some scissors. So I've got some scissors here. And you're going to go from the corner. Now, if you're doing this and you're under a certain age, it's important that you get your mom and dad to help you. But what you do is you go from the corner. If I come back here, hopefully you can see. You go from the corner, the left-hand corner. So you hold it face up. You go from the left-hand corner slightly in. And you, you cut like that. So you're going at an angle. Then once you've gone at an angle, you then kind of basically go vertical. Vertical, but slightly to the right. And you end up with something like that. That's what you want to cut. So let me show that to the camera so you guys can see. That is what we're ultimately cutting out there. Do you see that? Now, once you've cut that out, you then get yourself two from your deck. You get yourself two spot cards. And it doesn't matter what the spot cards are but I like them to be the same. So I would probably go for a two of diamonds and a two of hearts. So I'll go for the two red twos. Doesn't really matter what they are, but I do like them to be the same. And then the final thing that you need is some sellotape. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna find the end of the sellotape, which is very hard for me because I'm rubbish at finding the end of the sellotape. And when I say rubbish, I mean, I can't do it. There we go, brilliant. Okay, so you take yourself a piece of sellotape and you want to take yourself about this much, okay? About that much sellotape. And what you're going to do, and let me show you this here. This is your flap. You put your piece of sellotape right here on your flap. So you're holding it face down and you put your sellotape on there so it's sticking over halfway. Okay, so it's sticking over halfway, and then you take one of your twos, 
okay one of your uh, one of your spot cards and all you're going to do look at this look at this look at this this is the, this is the thing you're going to do you've got to bend this piece of sellotape around like i say if you can't keep up now don't worry about it because we're going to send you the recording of this but you bend this round here like this and then all you're going to do is you're going to stick this right here in the corner and you're going to stick it to this so when you look at it you end up with a little flap that's what it should look like. You've got a flap here that kind of pops open a little bit on top of a two. That's what you're looking for. That's what you're looking for. Okay. So I'm going to use the one that I made earlier. Now, this is how the trick works. Again, there's a little bit of prep, but there's only a little bit of prep, not a lot of prep. It's just a tiny little bit. So what you do is this. Watch. So you should now have three cards. You've got a red seven. You've got another red seven. Well, it doesn't have to be a red seven. But you've got two spot cards, one of which has got a flap on it. And then you've got another card that's completely different to all three cards. In this case, I'm using a joker. If you can get a different colored back for this card, that's great. But that's not important. Now, again, like with the string trick, there's a prep that you need to do. So you need to do something before you do the trick. And the prep is, and let me show you from this side, the prep is you need to take your joker and you need to put it underneath the flap like that. Now, how it goes is important. You don't want it to go all the way up like that. That's bad. You don't want it to go all the way down like that. That's bad. You want to have the top of the joker level with the top of the jack like that. So the top of the joker has to be level with the top of the jack. And then you take this seven and you put that on top like that. And then you hold everything in the bottom corner. So you end up with that sort of situation there. Okay, so that's what you end up with. So that when you bring your cards out and you hold them this way, you say, I've got three cards. Now you've actually technically got three and a half cards, but you can't tell, it looks like just three cards. So you say, I've got three cards, and then you turn cards around and you say, which one's the odd one out? Now everybody will say that the jack is the odd one out, because it is, it's the only one with the red, blue back, and it's also the only one with a, uh, that's not a spot card. Now, this is the move. Watch the move. I'm going to show you from the front. And then I'm going to show you from the back. This is the move. Watch the move. You show the three cards. You show the jack. And you say, I'm going to take the jack out. And what you've done is you've switched that jack for a joker. And how that works, so we're in this situation, like this. Okay, there's our three cards. This is what you're looking at from your angle. You're gonna grab the blue card and you're gonna pull it out. And they think that's the jack, but it's actually the joker, the jack stays there. And then all you do is you take those cards and put them away. You don't want anyone to be looking at these cards. So if you've got a pocket, put them in your pocket. You just want everyone to focus here. So I'll do it one more time in full speed from the front so you can see. So it looked like this. Look, I've got two seven, I've got three cards. Um, the one that's the odd one out is the blue one in the middle uh, because it's the only one that's not a red back. It's also the only one that's a jack. We've got two sevens and we've got a jack. Now I want you to watch that jack very, very carefully because I'm going to try right in front of your eyes to make it disappear. These then go in your pocket and then you can do whatever you want to to make that card disappear. Now it's really important when you do some magic, you have to do something to account for the magic. So when you're going to make that disappear, you have to do something. You can blow. You can snap your fingers, you can flick the card, you can wiggle your fingers, you can do whatever you want to, but it's really important to do something so that people know that that's the magic moment. And then the nice thing is this card can be examined and no, nobody ever thinks about looking at the red cards because this is the card that's changed. So it's really easy to do. It'll take you a couple of seconds with arts and craft to make the gimmick up, but once you've made it, and by the way, what I mean by gimmick is this card. Whenever you've got a special card or a special something that you do a trick with, it's called a gimmick. So it'll take you a couple of seconds to make the gimmick up. And then once you've made it up, you'll be able to do this anytime, anywhere. It's a really cool, really easy trick to do that'll fool everybody. You guys like it? Give me a thumbs up if you like it. Guys, see some thumbs up. That's really good. Okay, good stuff. Good stuff. Good stuff. So we can do another trick right now. I'm going to do one more card trick. And then I'm going to teach you a, a, a trick with some elastic bands. But I'm going to do one more card trick, first of all. Now, I want you guys to see. I'm going to come forward. I want you to see this. Now, now can, you, can you see? I've got eight cards here. 
Let me turn them this way. I've got eight cards. Now, the girl that I spoke to earlier with the headphones in, put your hand in the air. Hello again. You're being amazing. You are doing such an amazing job. Because I can't hear you, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to show you that I've got eight cards. I've got a, uh, I've got a, I've got a ten of clubs. I've got a four of spades, I've got an ace of diamonds, I've got a jack of spades, I've got an eight of hearts, I've got a seven of spades, and I've got a king of clubs. Now, normally, if you were here, I would get you to touch one of these cards. But because you can't touch one of these cards, I'm gonna go through them one at a time. And when you've got, when you see, when, when it's the card that you want, give me a big thumbs up, because you can have any one of these eight cards you want to. But let me tell you, before you give me a thumbs up, it doesn't matter which card you pick, I'm going to prove to you I knew what that card was before you even told me. I'm going to prove to you I know what card you're thinking of. So I'm going to go through them. When it's the card that you want, give me a big thumbs up. So we've got the Joker. We've got the Ten of Clubs. We've got the Four of Spades. We've got the Ace of Diamonds. We've got the Jack of Diamonds. The Jack of Diamonds, is that the one you want? The Jack of Diamonds? Do you want to change your mind or are you happy with the Jack? You're happy, aren't you? You want the Jack? Give me a thumbs up, you want the Jack. Okay, cool. Look, I'm gonna put, look over here, make sure I'm not cheating. I'm gonna put your Jack over here. Now I'm gonna prove to you I knew that you would pick the Jack. And the reason I knew you would pick the Jack is because what I did to all of these other cards is I wrote a bit, I put a big cross on them. Can you see this? Every single one of these cards has got a big cross on. Every single one of them has got a big, massive cross on. And the only one that hasn't got a cross on is the one that you picked, the Jack of Diamonds. Proof that I knew exactly which card you'd pick. Now, if you want to know how that works, give me a big thumbs up. Give me a big thumbs up. Okay, so this is just plain cheating. Let me explain how it works. So all you need to do, you need to get yourself eight cards. Doesn't matter what the eight cards are as long as they're all different. And then you need to get yourself a permanent marker pen. I use the Sharpie marker. I'll show you exactly what I use. I use this. This is a Sharpie marker. You can use a Sharpie marker if you want to, but if not, any marker pen will work. Now, let me show you what we're doing here. You need to, just like with the other tricks that I taught you, you need to prep this trick. So you need to do something beforehand. But the nice thing about this is, you only need to prep this trick once, one time only. And once you've prepped it once, you are good to go. So we need to do something to these eight cards with the Sharpie marker. We do it once and one time only, and then we'll never have to do it again. It'll always be ready. What you do, is you put a big cross on four of the cards. There's only four cards with a big cross. So you've got a card with a cross, a card without a cross, a card with a cross, a card without a cross, a card with a cross, a card without a cross, a card with a cross, and a card without a cross. So they're alternating. Cross, no cross, cross, no cross, cross, no cross, cross, no cross. Doesn't matter what the cards are, doesn't matter what order they're in, as long as the backs of the cards alternate cross, no cross, cross, no cross. If you're following this, give me a thumbs up. Good, now, here's how it works. You spread out the cards, and you have somebody touch a card, and you say to them, I know which card that you are going to pick. I knew beforehand which card you are gonna pick, and I'm gonna prove it to you. I'm going to spread the cards out. You're going to touch one card. You can touch any card you want to, and I will, I will prove to you I knew what that card is. Now, here's what happens. You touch a, a card. So let's say they touch the seven of spades. Now, this is important, so watch very carefully. You spread the cards out. They touch a card. Let's say they touch the seven. Wherever they touch, you cut the packet at that point. And what I mean by cut is you just take all of the cards above the seven, and you put them to the bottom. Okay, so if they pick the 10, you just take all of the cards above the 10 and put them to the bottom. If they pick the 8, you put all of the cards above the 8 to the bottom. In this case, we said the 7, so you do that. You then take that card and you put it on the table. And now you're going to do a move called the Old Ram Subtlety, invented by a very famous magician. His name was Ed Marlowe. He's known as the grandfather of card magic. 
And here's how it works. You've basically got here alternating cards, uh, crosses and no crosses. You're gonna, sh you're gonna show the cards on the back and you're gonna make it look like every single card has a cross on it. Let me show you how. So you're taking the cards, you're holding them as if you're about to deal cards on the table. You just take one card off and then you turn both hands over. So they're seeing a cross here, they're seeing a cross here. You then turn the cards back over and you drop this one on the table and you drop the face card on the table. So you're showing this one has a cross, but then you're dropping this one off the face that doesn't have a cross. Now you just repeat it. You just take this one, you turn and you turn, showing crosses. You then drop this one and you take the one off the face and drop it. And then you take this one, you turn and turn, you show a cross here and a cross here, drop this one, drop this one, and then you show this has got a cross. So in full speed, it looks like every single card has got a cross on it. In reality, you're hiding the backs of three cards. So again, very slowly, you show, you drop that one, then the, you drop the face one, not the back one. So you're showing the back, but you're dropping the face. Drop that one, drop the face. Drop that one, drop the face, drop here. So in full speed, it looks like this. It really looks like you're showing every single card and they can see that there's a cross on the back of every single card. And then you pick up the one that they named and it's the only one that doesn't have a cross. Now, just so you know, that's how it works 90% of the, 50% of the time. But the other 50% of the time, they'll touch a card and they'll touch one with a cross on. So the Ace of Diamonds has got a cross on. So if, they take, so if we go back to the beginning, you say touch a card. If they touch, touch an Ace, you take all of these cards, put them to the bottom, you put this card over there, and they touch the card with a cross on. But it doesn't matter because if you do that same old round subtlety, that same move that we did before, what will happen is when you do it, you'll say all of these cards are normal. None of them have got anything on the back. They're all red backed cards. But this one over here is the only one that I put a cross on the back. So it doesn't matter which card they name, it works every single time. So very quickly to recap, you take every other card and you put a big cross on the back of it, you spread the cards out, and you get them to touch a card. Wherever they touch, the joker in this case, you put all of the cards above it to the bottom, and you put that card to the table. Then once you put it to the table, you just do the old ram subtlety. So take the top card, turn, Show you say all of these cards have got crosses on every single one of them, but the card that you picked, this joker, is the only one that doesn't have a cross. You pop that there, you put the cards away in your pocket, and you, you, you've done the trick. It's a really easy trick to do. All you need is a marker pen and you need a few playing cards, and you are good to go. Now, I've got to be honest with you guys, I think that you are all doing really, really awesome. Let me know if you're enjoying yourself. Put your hand in the air. I want to know if you're enjoying yourself. If you're having a good time. That's great. Now, I want to show you a trick that uses elastic bands, because elastic bands are something that you find around the house all the time, and I wanted to show you a trick with an elastic band. So I've got a few elastic bands here. I want to show you a trick. So, um, have you got an elastic band? If you have, wave it around so I can see. Got an elastic band? Hey, you got an elastic band! That's awesome stuff. So, here's the thing. Look, let me show you the trick first of all, then I'll teach it you. This is a really easy trick. It's two phases. In other words, there's two parts to it. I'm going to take this elastic band. Um, I, I want to make blue is not a good color because I want you to see it. Green would be better. There you go, against my top. Can you see it? Can you see it okay? Yeah, can you see it if I come close to the camera? Give me a thumbs up. Let me know. Oh, okay, good stuff. Right, okay. So here's the thing. I've got the elastic band around my hand. I'm going to put it around these two fingers, and uh, you can see it there. Ouch. Pinging myself there. That's not funny. Ow, 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 ow. Now watch. I'm going to try and make this elastic band jump from these two fingers to these two fingers here. I'm going to literally make it jump from here to here when I snap my fingers and open up my hand. Watch this. There it is on those two fingers. One, two, three and it jumps onto these two fingers, which is just weird. Now I'm gonna go further, I'm gonna go one step further, because that's good, but I'm gonna go better. See, I've got another elastic band here, this is an orange one. I'm gonna put it on these two fingers again, but I'm gonna take another elastic band, and I'm gonna wrap it around the tops of my fingers. Can you see it wrapped around the tops of my fingers there? So now, I'm gonna do the same trick again. 
but it's more difficult now because I've got this other elastic band along the tops of my fingers. So what I have to do now, if I want to get this green band off these fingers and put them onto these fingers, I have to take the orange band off, I have to take the green band off, I have to put the green band on these two fingers, then I have to wrap the orange band around again. But I'm going to do it in less than a second. Watch. You can see the orange band. You can see the green band. I'm going to out. I'm going to make a fist again. Watch. On three. One, two, three. And once again, it jumps onto these two fingers. Now, if you don't know how that works, put your hand up in the air. Let me know. Okay. It's really, 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 really easy. Here's how it works. So you need an elastic band. Now, I have very big hands. So I, what I, you probably haven't got very big hands. You've probably got little hands. So what I advise you do, you need to wrap this elastic band. You need to put the elastic band over your forefinger and your middle finger. You need to wrap it around these two fingers. Now, what I suggest you do is I suggest you double wrap it. So I suggest you take your elastic band and you wrap it around twice like that. Because that way, you don't, you don't want it to be loose on there. You want it to be fairly tight. So if you've got little hands and you've got a big elastic band, it's better if you, uh, if you wrap it around. Now you, it, or you can use a smaller elastic band. You know, I'm using a size 19, but if you want to use like a size 16 band, that's fine. But you can just double wrap it, okay? So if you just double wrap it, you want it nice and tight like that, okay? But you want to put the elastic band on these two fingers. So show me, put your hands up, and let me see that you've got the elastic band on those two fingers. Amazing, no, 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 uh, headphone girl. <laughs> I don't know your name, but headphone girl. It's on these two fingers. It's on the forefinger and the middle finger, not these two fingers here. Put it on these two fingers. So the one near your thumb and the middle finger, put it on these two. Show me your hand, let me see that you've done it. So put it on those two fingers, okay? Those two fingers, not, not those fingers down there, the ones nearest the thumb. You got it? Cool. Now, once you put, amazing, you rock. Awesome, that's so cool. So here's what you're gonna do, right? Okay, so it's here. Now, you're gonna make a fist, but as you make a fist, you're gonna do the secret, super secret special move. So all that's going to happen, I'm going to do it from behind. So this is what you'd be looking at. You're looking at your hand. And what you do is you take your other hand and you pull the elastic band back towards yourself like this, right? Now, when you've pulled the elastic band back, you're going to make a fist. But how you make this fist is important. I want you to see. What I do is all of my fingers, all four of my fingers go into the elastic band. And then I let go and it rests along my knuckles. Might take you a couple of goes to do that, but you pull back, make a fist, and have that go along your knuckles like that. Now, the thing is, if they're watching it from this side, anybody you're showing it to, it looks like it's on these two fingers. But from your side, you can see that the elastic band is resting along the knuckles of all four fingers. So again, you put the elastic band here, you pull back with your other hand as you're showing it, you go, look, it's really on here. You make a fist, all four fingers go into the band, and then you let go and that rests on your knuckles. And from the front, you can't tell. Look, watch this from the front. From the front, it just looks like you pull it and you make a fist. And it looks like it's here on these two fingers. Now, all you're gonna do, and you're not gonna believe how easy this is, but it is so super easy. All you're gonna do is open up your hand. And if you open up your hand, you wanna open it fairly quickly, you don't want to open up slowly, but if you open it up fairly quickly, the band will automatically jump from these fingers to these fingers. Watch. It just does it automatically. So, and it's because it's resting on the four fingers. So let's go through that again. So it's here on these two fingers. So it's here on these two fingers. With your other hand, you pull back like that. And then all your fingers, and this is the bit that'll take a little bit of practice. All your fingers go here into the band, and you rest that against the knuckles like that, okay? That gets rested against the knuckles. And then from this side, you're just gonna open up your hand, and when you open up your hand, watch, boom, it jumps. It's that simple. Now again, it's a practice thing, it'll take a little bit of practice, but it is not a hard thing to do. I showed this to my son when he was three years old, and at three years old, he started doing this. So I know that you guys are way older than three. So I know that you're going to be able to do it, no problem. So like that, pull back. Now, there's the second part as well, where you wrap another elastic band around the top. The cool thing is, it's exactly the same trick. There's no difference at all. So let me get the other elastic band and show you. So this is on these fingers, okay? If you take another elastic band and wrap it around the top like this, one, two, three, 
four like that, okay, it looks harder because it looks like you've got another elastic band stopping this elastic band from coming off. But you do exactly the same thing. Let me show you again. Look, I'm going to come close into the camera. Watch this. You grab this. You pull it back. These fingers all go inside and you drop that on top. Okay, so these fingers all go inside and you drop that on top. So from the front, you just open it. Well, from the back, let me show you from the back. From the back, you're just going to open up your hand. You do exactly the same thing. And even though that orange band is there, it still jumps. And the reason it does is because how it jumps, just so you know, is when you open up your hand, it actually does that. Okay, so you don't need to take it off your fingers. So you just have that along the top of the fingers. You do exactly the same move that I just taught you. Look, there it is, resting on my knuckles. And then you just open up your hand. So from the front, let me show you from the front one last time. So from the front, you say, look, I'm going to put this here on this hand. I'm going to take an orange band. I'm going to wrap it around my fingers at the top, stopping me from cheating. And I'm going to try and make this band jump from these fingers onto these fingers. Watch. There's the move. One, two, three. Boom. And it jumps across and it looks absolutely amazing. And that's the trick. I mean, you can do this anytime, anywhere. If you've got yourself some elastic bands, you're good to go anytime you want to. Um, so, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. We're almost done. I want to know if you've had a good time. If you've had a good time, put your hand in the air. You guys have been absolutely amazing. We've got about five minutes left, so I haven't got time to teach another trick. But I've probably got time to do one more trick. Would you like to see one last trick? Would you like me to perform one last trick? Well, you would. Okay. So let me do one last trick. Um, what shall I do? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do this. I'm going to show you one more trick. I'm going to perform one more trick. So this is one of my favorite tricks. This trick, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come in front of the table. You guys can see this. This is called the four ring trick. I'm going to come really close. Can you see the rings? This is the four ring trick. This is the oldest trick in magic. One, two, three, four rings. This trick is over 2,000 years old. It uses four rings. This is ring number one. This is ring number two. This is ring number three. This is ring number four. Now I want you to watch. I'm going to take two of the rings and put them here on my wrist. And then I'm going to hold these two rings here. I want you to watch very carefully. The idea is this ring is a solid ring. This ring is a solid ring. Two solid rings. I'm going to try right in front of your eyes to link these rings together. I'm going to bang them together three times. And on the first bang, nothing will happen. On the second bang, nothing will happen. But on the third bang, they will link together. Watch, I'll do it here so you can see. One, two, three. And you can see this ring is linked onto this one, just like this ring is linked onto this one. Now, the easy part is linking the rings. The hard part is unlinking them. You just got to pull like that and they come apart. Now, I know you're thinking, you're thinking, wow, it's really impressive. Oh, hang on, I missed it there. You probably think it's really impressive that I can ring, link the rings and unring the rings, and it is pretty cool, but I'm going to see if I can do it again with these two rings that are on my wrist. Watch, I'm going to take these off. So we've linked these. I'm going to link these now. Watch, one, two, I'm just going to blow, three, and those two link as well. Let's even go one step further. Let me put that ring down there for a minute. I'm going to take this one and link this one onto this one, giving us a chain of three. Watch, one, two, three. Now I've got a chain of three, three links linked together. I can even rub and have the rings link in nine separate places, whilst at the same time making the rings look a little bit like Mickey Mouse. There's the nose, there's the ears. But I don't want to do that because that's showing off. But what I will do is I'll make that bottom ring go all the way up to the top. Watch. Ta-da! Okay, you don't look very impressed. I'll do it like this. Look, all the way up to the top. Now, the only way I can go further than that is by taking this ring over here and trying to link this one onto the bottom one, then onto the middle one, then onto the top one. Watch this. I'm going to link it like this. One, two, three, four. That's four rings linked together. If I take this ring and rub this one onto this one, I now have three rings linked on one ring. If that's good, put your hands in the air. Say me. Brilliant stuff. So for the big finish, I'm going to try and make the four rings come off one at a time. I'm gonna separate each individual ring. As I, as I separate each ring, it'll be more impressive, look. 
The first one, you just rub in the right place and the first one comes off that ring. If I then take the next one and rub in the right place, that second ring comes off, that's ring number two, which leaves the two here. And if I get these last two rings to separate, that's when everybody will go crazy for the big finish. That's one, that's two, that's three, and that's all four rings separate. And that's the trick. If you like that, put your hand in the air so I can see. You guys are absolutely amazing. I want to say thank you very much for watching. You were awesome. I have really enjoyed performing for you. I've really enjoyed uh, teaching you magic. We're going to be back here again next week teaching a whole bunch of different magic tricks. So if you'd like to learn some more, put your hand in the air so I know you're going to be back. Awesome. I'm going to be looking forward to seeing you. It's going to be absolutely amazing. I've got some even better tricks lined up next week. But here's what I want you to do. Practice. 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 You can watch the video back again. You've got the rubber band trick. You've got the, uh, you know, you've got the, uh, you've got the two card tricks. You've got the string tricks. You've got a whole bunch of tricks there that you can learn. Practice them. Get really good at them. Think of the presentations for them. Make sure that you get them really, really good. And then you can show all your friends and show all your family. And remember, when they ask you how it's done, and they will ask you how it's done, when they ask you how it's done, don't tell them. Just say, Chris says, I can't tell you. It's a secret. So make sure you don't tell anyone. Guys, I hope you have an amazing day. I know we're back here again a little bit later on today. So I'll see you uh, else, but uh, that would be amazing. And I'll see you again. Give me a big wave so I know that you've had fun. Give me a big wave. Let me know. Awesome. Thank you so much, guys. I will see you again. You are amazing.